blah, 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 this is our stuff, and this is this, and blah, 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 and da, 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 and yeah, Chris, you're so funny, not really. Blah, 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 this is our stuff, do, 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 da, ba, do, blah, 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 it's definitely recording. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Chris, you said that. All right. All right. So this is what our lives look like after Lights, a year. Camera. So this is what our lives look like after 10 months of travel. 10 months? Yeah. Disclaimer, this is not a minimalist packing video. No. We're Laura and Chris, and we left our home in Australia at the beginning of the year to travel right around the world for the adventure of a lifetime. We've navigated our way across four continents and have had more experiences than we could have ever imagined. Traveling for this long hasn't come without its challenges though, and we have definitely had some major ups as well as some downs. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video from us and join the adventure. Welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, I'm Chris. That's Laura. I'm Laura. Uh, the artists formerly known as Moose and Roo, <laughs> as of a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> we usually make travel videos, but we are at the end of our trip and 10 months into our trip, we have decided to finally make a what's in our bag. Yeah. What's in our backpacking bags. We have been, video. we've been wanting to do this for months. We've like fought about doing this. Like Chris will be like, all right, today's the day we're going to do the packing video. And then it just never seems to happen. Not a how to pack. No, it's we, sh we should have done that at the beginning of the trip. Yeah. And this is not a technology gear review. <laughs> this is what our bags look like. Yeah. After 10 months. So let's go. Let's get into it. The first things first, the company we chose to go with was none other than Kathmandu. So we actually ended up kind of working with Kathmandu and this is something that we wanted to mention. Um, obviously when we started and when anybody starts, they're still quite small, you're still building up your following. So Kathmandu actually have a sponsorship program. But it's essentially a gear sponsorship. So because we were starting a brand new YouTube channel and social media platforms, they're kind enough to give us a gear sponsorship, yeah. which basically meant whatever we needed, we got massive discounts of it. So yeah. thank you Kathmandu. We wanted to find a company um, that had really high ethical standards and something that we knew was going to last really well. So, Kathmandu. And it has lasted. We're not being paid to say this. Show the, show We're not being fact. sponsored. We're definitely not being paid to say this. <laughs> Although, Kathmandu, if you're watching, <laughs> we love your stuff. These are our bags. These are our 65 litre Entrada backpacks. Yeah. Um, they come with a RS2 harness support system on the back. I won't get too technical with everything, but it's amazing. Very comfortable. We have packed it with so much crap that yeah. we did not need. Yeah. Particularly Laura. The quality on it is just freaking amazing. It hasn't ripped, it hasn't torn. No. They're so easy to carry on your back on your backs. Honestly, tossed on conveyor belts, tossed around on the floor, tossed in the around dirt, on buses. in the mud, in the bus, yeah. on an aeroplane, and they have just held up. Yeah. No so rips, no rips, well. no tears, nothing. nothing at all. So the next thing that we want to talk about. Um, and something that we knew we needed when we were going to be traveling for this long was packing cells. So amazing. A lot of people talk about these in like a how to pack video, but it's because they are the best thing out. So we, I have quite a few more than Chris does because I packed <laughs> a little bit more. Chris has, you've got two, don't you? I have three. I have the largest one. So I didn't pack as much. Granted, I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. Um, the problem, I'll just say the problem before we packed while we were packing was we went from so many different extremes in weather. Yeah. It snowed. Ice, snow, yeah. rain, drizzle. So it became very hard to pack for every different climate. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the bare essentials we've kept. The good thing about these packing cells and why Kathmandu is rated so high is because they're all made from plastic, recycled yes. plastic bottles. That was something that we loved about this. The smaller ones are made with one plastic bottle um, and some of the bigger mm -hmm. ones are made up from two or three, but we thought it was really, really cool how they actually put how many plastic bottles. I've got like five t-shirts, one pair of long pants, two pairs of shorts, two boardies, hiking tops, three, two or three singlets. They all pretty much fit into these two bad boys. The other thing I've got is a smaller one, which is made from one plastic bottle. You can cup, compartmentalize your bag, make it easy to access stuff, and they're just fantastic. 
On my end, this is, I guess, more for the ladies. Like we said, this isn't a how-to pack. I packed way too much stuff. I way too much stuff. Don't overpack, even if you're pack, even if you're going for a long time. So I have one, two, three, four. I have five packing cells. This whole one is dedicated to bikinis. It's a bit of a problem. <laughs> Flip. How many t-shirts and shorts did you have? I have my nine bikinis, six pieces of active wear slash hiking wear. I've got seven pants slash rompers. I have one set of pajamas, which I thought was pretty good. I've got five dresses, <laughs> 12 pairs of shorts slash skirts. You see this? 31 shirts slash sweaters. It has taught me that I need to become much more of a minimum much more of a minimalist and you don't need as much stuff as you think you need in life. You really don't. The most important piece I think that I, we really want to talk about and share with you guys is these Kathmandu Gore-Tex rain jackets. Because they have Gore-Tex um, material, you get a lifetime guarantee for any rips or tears or any problems with them. I cannot stress enough, if you go to a rainy environment, you have to have one of these. They're super warm, we have hiked volcanoes with this, we've hiked in Patagonia with this, Vietnam we did a scooter trip, like a four or five hour scooter trip on the High Van Pass in these puppies in like pouring tropical rain and driving pretty fast on a scooter. So these, and even without a sweater underneath, you're warm. So yeah. these, these things are amazing. What's been the handiest thing you think we've had on this trip? That's been like, that's compartmentalized everything. Yeah, these. These puppies. Yeah. Everything's Kathmandu again. And again, it says how many plastic water bottles it was made out of. Um, but yeah, these are our toiletry bags. These have held everything. Da, 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 da. Yeah, they're perfect. They hang up. This is the handiest one, especially if you're in like a hostel or wherever. You can hang up from anywhere, really. Um, one thing I wanted to, we are going to touch on in this video as well, is how we've reduced our impact while we've been traveling, how we've sort of reduced plastic use and different things. So one thing I want to talk about super quickly for any ladies watching this, um, a couple things that I have in my toiletry bag. This is amazing. Shampoo bar. I got this one from Lush and you can, I think there's a few companies making them now. Um, but yeah, it's, well, it looks a little bit funny right <laughs> it's now. It's gone, grunny. it's gone a bit wonky. Um, but these shamp, my best friend back home actually introduced me to these, but they are amazing. They're super small. They don't cause any plastic or anything. Um, they take up way less space in your bag compared to if you had a full bottle of shampoo or conditioner. So these have been amazing. A few other things that have been essential for reducing our plastic as much as we can. Um, right now we're using a reusable water bottle. We share it and we try and fill it up as much as we can if we're staying at a hotel that has um, filtered, water. filtered water. But at the beginning of the trip, we had filtered water bottles and they were amazing. They yeah, were two, so, so good. Two filtered water bottles. Yeah, they again, as well, have been a godsend. So we have our little bamboo spork. Um, this is a, I believe an Australian company as well, Ever Eco. Um, so yeah, we bring these on the road as much as we can with us. If we're out for day trips, different things, so we don't use plastic knives and forks and spoons and different things. Straws. A lot of this stuff is pretty common. Most people, I mean, I'd hope most people Are have trying, these if yeah. you're traveling. Eliminate the need for plastic straws, which when you travel as long as we have this year, there is a so plastic. much plastic everywhere. Um, the other thing we've had since the start of the trip and we used back home in Australia was our Keep Cups. They're a UK based company and they go from this to that. So it's perfect for travel. With a little holder at the bottom. And, and they, come with, they come with a little straw as well. So sometimes if we being at an Airbnb, we make a smoothie or something, we pop it into here. Um, one more thing before we move on. Uh, reef safe sunscreen. I can't remember, I think it's, there's the chemical no oxybenzone or something that they don't put in reef safe sunscreen. Uh, contributes to coral bleaching. Um, smart choices, if you spend a lot of time in the water, just use reef safe stuff. Weigh the cost between, yeah. you know, environmental impact versus spending maybe five to ten dollars on sunscreen. That lasts us quite a long time. Uh, we didn't talk about shoes. Yeah, um, last thing to kind of talk about. Now, I... I have changed a few shoes on this trip, uh, mainly because I started off with thongs, and I was in thongs. Flip-flops, aka flip-flops. Sorry, flip-flops. 
to our non-Australian audience. I was in flip-flops for about five to six months. I got really sore, lower back pain, yeah. everything. So I switched to Tevas. Mm -hmm. Tevas were a godsend. They saved my feet. Um, they're a little bit worn out now because he's been wearing them every single day. And the other thing I have is Converse. And for hiking, I still have my hiking shoes. I haven't done a lot of hiking the past six months, but yeah. they've been in handy if we've done like... I used to have hiking boots, um, but I got rid of them in Hawaii when we met up with Chris's family because I knew we weren't going to do much hiking anymore at that point. So I got rid of my hiking shoes. Now my shoes again, once again, ladies, I overpacked. So <laughs> I've got... Okay. Four pairs of sandals. Um, these are usually what I wear most. Once again, I always end up what's in most comfortable. So these are Geniuses. It's a Spanish brand. Got a couple pairs of flip-flops. <laughs> got a couple pair, or I've got one pair of sort of nicer shoes if I want to look, I guess, a little bit more dressed up. Got two pairs of runners. So I've got my sort of like walking, working out runners and just other sneakers. I mostly got this when we were in Europe and we were walking around a lot. So yeah, I have way too many pairs of shoes. Yeah. Hopefully next time we do a packing video, it'll look You'll see the difference between it'll how look, we pack this time yeah, and how we pack for the next one. It'll year. be a bit more minimalist for the next one. So the one last thing that we wanted to show, because we wanted to show you guys everything that we have at this point, is we both just have a backpack each. So this is just our little travel backpack each week when we have our big... Mine doesn't look like that. No. <laughs> Chris, Chris's is in pink. We just pop these on the front of us. Um, but yeah, we, we use them as day bags. Yeah, it's our day bags. Mine, which has more my camera gear into it, which will be another video. But mine is the Think Tank Mind Shift uh, 26 liter, 26 liter backlight. Um, so his basically day bag is camera freaking gear. Freaking incredible bag. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say about it right now. There'll be another video about it in the future. And my hat. Yeah, these are my three hats. My three hats, and I have a sarong. So yeah, that is basically what our, we are leaving. We are going home in like three days. I go home in two days. Yeah, and I go home in three or four days. And that's what our backpacks look like after 10 months. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. It, again, is a little bit different than what we normally do, but we wanted to share with you how we packed our bag for the past 12 months. Yeah, 10 um, months. 10 months. And what it looked like at the end of it. Yeah. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the new Chris and Laura, formerly known as Moose and Rue. And we'll see you guys next week. See you guys.